thing that needs to happen is she needs to get her momentum going. You can see she whips her legs up and gets the momentum to fly over the bar. Being congratulated, she got a 9.825. And Utah just continues to post those big numbers. Georgia junior Heather Stepp is on the beam. Last year at this time, she had a terrible elbow injury, but she is back. Heather has to hit this balance beam routine to keep Georgia in the race. She's setting up here for a combination series. You're going to see a layout back flip in the middle of the combination. Yes. Excellent. Keep in mind that music you hear is coming from the floor exercise. And her jumps and her movements and her routine has a very high level of difficulty. So back handspring, half turn, she had a slight mistake there. There's a cartwheel with no hands. And now she's gonna set up for her dismount. A very difficult one, one of the few being done in this competition. Round off, double back somersault. One step on the landing, but an excellent dismount. For Heather Steph of Georgia, a 9.85. And now let's go back to Utah, where the senior, Shelly Scherer, is ready for the bars. A severe ankle sprain a few weeks ago limits her to just this event. Coach Greg Marsden also lost freshman Suzanne Metz for the whole competition. Shelly is so strong on this event. That's why Greg Marsden wants her in the lineup here. We talked earlier about the importance of executing the release moves. Here's a piked flyaway. Shelly does the same blind release move, but in a tucked position. And now she's setting up for a dismount for a healthy gymnast. It's a very hard impact. She's going to have to grit her teeth. Good landing. A gutsy performance from Shelly Scherer. A 9-9. Nine, nine. And what an emotional moment it is for the senior and her fellow Lady Utes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Georgia's Hope Spivey is looking real down after her beam performance. And Hope's trouble began here on this tumbling series. You can see right here her hips are totally out of line. Her leg comes out, but she pulls it out. But then her troubles continue. You'll see here on her dismount a very difficult one, round off, Double back dismount, too much rotation, and a big deduction. So for the 88 Olympian, an unusually low 9-2-5. Here's our first look at super senior Missy Marlowe of Utah, another 1988 Olympian, and the only woman to score a perfect 10 in all four events this season. And Missy really can swing bars. She makes it look easy. Look at the form and the execution. There's that Veronin release. Beautiful extension in her arms and her legs into a blind release move. Now only thing she has left is her dismount. A tuck comb in each, good landing. We talked earlier about the Veronin with the momentum up and over the bar. Right back into a handstand. And here's the dismount. Good height and good form in the tuck position. Teammates want a 10. 
Pretty close, a 9.975 from Missy Marlowe. And so, after three rotations, the Utes take over first place by a big margin over Georgia, with Penn State and Alabama third and fourth. Julianne? Coach Marsden, you're in the overall lead. You must be pretty happy right now. Well, I am. You know, we struggled just a little bit on vault. Thank goodness you get two chances at that one. <laughs> so that helped us, actually. And then, and then uh, once we got the jitters out, they really came through and, and just unbelievable bar sets. So, so I think we're, we're settled down now and ready for balance beam. So can you keep it going? Oh, I think so. We'll see. Thanks. Mary? Coach, Georgia's in second place, but trailing by a big margin right now, 1.7 uh, from Utah. Can you make that up at all? Well, Utah hasn't come to beam yet, and I think if they have some problems on beam, then we have a chance to make it up. But if they nail beam, I don't think there's any way. It's a pretty big margin. Pretty disappointing for your team? Yeah, really disappointing. I mean, Bars has been our best event all year, and the girls that fell haven't fallen all year. So I know they're really disappointed, and, you know, they're trying hard to come back. All right. Good luck to you, Coach. Thanks. In the meantime, Greg Marsden and his wife and assistant coach Megan continue to plot their strategy. Back with more right after this. So Oregon State's Joy Selig was a back-to-back -back national gymnastics champion on the balance beam. Joy, who also serves as a big sister, is pursuing a career in coaching. Going out to schools and speaking and reading and talking to them about drugs and stuff like that. Um, that's been kind of neat because I've gotten to use gymnastics in that way. Joy Selig was named the 1991 NCAA Woman of the Year finalist. Mary Carrillo and Julianne McNamara in St. Paul, Minnesota, hard by the banks of the Mississippi River and home to the 1992 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. Halfway through, Utah is in the lead with Georgia leading the pack of pursuers. But there was another competition here, the Individual Event Championships. And no one shined brighter than Utah's Missy Marlowe. She won on the bars and on the floor. In college gymnastics, the team competition is the most important aspect. But here, Missy was competing for individual titles. And she seemed very relaxed and confident. It's interesting because she's always worried about her floor exercise. She says, I wasn't born to tumble and my teammates have seen me land flat on my head. Marlo says, I've always been elegant and pretty, not powerful and fast, but you can tell she has worked on her strength. <laughs> Missy also won on the beam, becoming the first woman in history to win three individual titles. She was tied on the beam by Dana Dabransky of Alabama, and here's her beam performance. She looked so assured on this event like the balance beam might as well have been a foot wide as she set up here for her dismount very solid landing in the vault, there was a three-way tie. Tammy Marshall of UMass and Kristen Kenora of Utah finished with 9.8125. Julianne, how about that second vault of Kristen Kenoyer's? It was a great one. A high-piked front somersault, and she nailed the landing. They were joined in that group by Heather Stepp of Georgia, who shared the title. The first three-way event title tie ever. More team competition after this message and a word from your local station. This championship so far, Utah is in the lead. Missy Marlowe's bar score is the highest score thus far. And keep in mind, Georgia and Utah will be going head to head in our final rotation. And in this fourth rotation, the tide is on the vault, Penn State's on the beam, and Georgia is on the floor. Utah has a bye. Georgia is getting ready. And as the tension mounts, Penn State's Judy Abner is looking a bit worried. Alabama's Sarah Patterson has concerns as well. First up, Katherine Kelleher on the vault for the Tide. Katherine vaults a handspring, front in a tuck position. Nice finish.
A 9.875 by Kelleher. That becomes her new personal best. And here is Heather Stepp of Georgia taking the floor. Heather's routine is packed full of difficulty. She competes a world-class routine. Setting up for her first tumbling run. It's a full twisting double back, but she does it in a piked position. Look at the height on that and a perfect landing. Her second tumbling run is another very hard skill. A front flip right there, right into a tucked double back somersault. Usually a gymnast will use this point in the routine to slow down and regroup, get their breath, but Heather doesn't do that. She just keeps on going. You can see she's still got a lot of energy left. She's setting up here for a double back dismount. This is so difficult to do at the end of a floor routine. Look at the height on that. What a powerful and commanding performance from Heather Stepp. Georgia is absolutely delighted. Here's that first tumbling pass. Look at the height. It almost looks like she gains height on her second flip. And the second tumbling run, a high front flip. And again, look at the arms up. Air Jordan, watch out. A 9-9 for Heather Stepp. Meantime, on the beam, you can see that Renee Liss, the junior from Penn State, is climbing back on. She's already fallen off, and this is her best event. And it's so hard after a fall like that to regain your composure and your focus, but that is what you have to do. Penn State's been going along so well coming into this apparatus, but the beam may just knock them out of contention. And to be quite honest with you, Mary, it just doesn't have quite the difficulty that it needs. Even with a flawless performance, it's going to be hard for her to get that big score. There's a no-hand and cartwheel. Nicely done. Now she's setting up for her beam dismount. Round off, back handspring. Up. Oh, that's a big mistake. She doesn't even have a dismount. And you know, that fall is symbolic of what has been happening throughout this meet, where the beam has been the bane of the gymnast's existence. It is imposing.